Okay, problem five. The graph of y equals negative x to the fourth minus 2x cubed plus 12x squared minus 5x is concave down four. And I have a few choices of intervals here. Okay, now I know that this idea of concavity, okay, concavity, concave down, is basically talking about the second derivative. So I'm trying to find where the second derivative, so d squared y dx squared, that's the second derivative, is concave down where it's less than zero, where it's negative. Okay, that's what I'm shooting for. So let's take this. We have y is equal to negative x to the fourth minus 2x cubed plus 12x squared minus 5x. There's our original function. To get to the second derivative, I start by taking the first derivative. So dy dx is equal to, bring the 4 out front, I have negative 4x cubed bring the 3 out, multiply the 3 and the 2, so I get a minus 6, and bring down the power, x squared. Bring the 2 out front, I get plus 24x. And I, the derivative of negative 5x, I bring the 1 out to the front, x to the 0 is 1, so I end up with just a minus 5 here. That shouldn't be any big surprise. That's the first derivative, but I'm going after the second derivative here, so let's take the derivative again. d squared y with respect to x squared, the second derivative, and I just go through the same thing. Negative 12x squared minus 12x plus 24. Okay. So I'm at this point right here. I have the second derivative. I need to figure out where it's less than zero. Usually it's easiest to start by setting it equal to zero. Find out where it crosses through. Since polynomials, this is a quadratic, second degree, um, will always be continuous. It can only change signs where this actually equals zero. So that'll help me figure out where to start, so I have 0 equals negative 12x squared minus 12x plus 24. I see that this entire thing over here, this entire right hand side, is divisible by 12. I'll actually divide out a negative 12. I prefer dealing with the leading coefficient as positive. It makes it a little easier for me to factor. So if I divide both sides, divide everything out by negative 12, I'm still left with 0, 0 is equal to, and now I have x squared minus x, sorry, plus x minus 2. Okay, that negative, negative came out to be positive. And easily factored, we know that this is going to end up equaling x plus 2 times x minus 1. If you don't see it, you can see that x squared minus x plus 2x gives you this plus x right here. 2 times negative 1 is negative 2. And so I know that I have zeros, so I know that that d squared y dx squared is equal to 0 when x is negative 2, zero product property, x plus 2 equals 0, when x is negative 2, or 1. And that shouldn't come as too much of a surprise, because we see all these negative 2s and 1s, also some negative 1s and 2s, those are probably wrong. So now I just need to figure out where it's positive and where it's negative. And I can do that pretty easily without doing much work at all. Let's look back at this function right here, the second derivative. Before I divide anything, dividing by this negative 12 actually changes some stuff. So we look back at the actual second derivative. 
and see that it is a quadratic function, which means the shape of it's going to be a parabola, and its leading coefficient is negative, which means the graph of this is actually going to be pointing downward. And in addition to that, I can see that I have zeros out at negative 2 and positive 1. And what that gives me, let's see if I can draw this anywhere near what a parabola should look like, something that looks like that. And from here, it should become pretty obvious that when I am less than negative 2, my second derivative is negative, it's below the x-axis, so I have x is less than negative 2, or when I'm greater than negative 1, or sorry, positive 1, you can see the curve is under the x-axis, so I have or x is greater than 1, so my answer here should be d. X is less than negative 2, or X is greater than 1.